Welcome to this video where we're going to be solving exponential equations but we first need to build them from the real life problems. So the first problem is talking about some business investment where we're going to be placing $7,000 in the saving account at an annual rate 5.6 that's R but don't forget to divide by 100% compounded semi-annually that's important phrase we'll change the formula not continuously anymore and so on Assuming that no withdrawals are made, how long will it take for the account to grow to 8036? So that's new. This is uh, the result of our investment and the result is given. That's usually what we are asked to find. Instead, we're asked to find how long it will take to get to that result. It means we're looking for t. And the t is usually located at the exponent. So here we're going to be using a formula that we know. And the formula is A equals P, that's the investment we made, 1 plus R over N raised to the N T. You know, carefully you need to figure out what is going on here, what the, all these variables and constants mean in the formula. So, final amount, so the in principle P, that's why I usually used P, is whatever we invested. And we invested 7,000. We can also write down here. $7,000 were invested originally. Then our rate is 5.6 divided by 100. That is 0 0.056. That's my R. But don't forget to divide by 100%. Then we also have, so we have, we figure out R, 0 0.056. N. N is the number of times compounded per year. And if it says semi-annually, then N is 2, twice per year. So N is 2 over here and N is 2 over here. And finally, the result, the result is A. So, and that is my result over here given. A is the final amount. So left-hand side is actually given. I'll write down like this. Left hand side is A736. What is the only thing we don't know? T. So we need to solve for T. That's exponential equation. Let's do it. 8036 equals $7,000 invested. 1 plus the rate 0 0.056 over how many times per year compounded. That's twice per year too. Raised to the twice per year times T. T is unknown and we're solving for T. Now, there are several ways to do that. I like to do it this way. I will first divide by my P, that's the $7,000, and then I will have 8036 all over 7,000. And now this piece is standing isolated, like so, raised to T. Now, since I need to dig into this 2t and then divide by 2 at the end, there's one function that is super helpful to put this 2t down from the exponent. And that function is called logarithm. So I'll apply natural log to both sides. Natural log to both sides. That's step two. And I will have natural log of this constant, whatever it is. You can always calculate at the end or right away. Doesn't matter ln of the parentheses 1 plus 0 0.056 all over 2 raised to 2t. Two what does the property of the log do with this exponent? Exactly, it puts it down over here. So I will have the natural log of 8036 7000 equals in red color 2t times natural log 1 plus 0 0.056 over 2 and that's the only function that does this magical trick or well, that takes the exponent and puts it down and by putting down I mean multiply by the log your job is to solve for t so I'll just divide everything that doesn't belong to t I will divide by let's do it this way I will delete this yellow piece come on and divide by everything which is not t on the left hand side on the right hand side so i'll divide by two 
and I divide by this log. Then I will have t equals, make sense? t equals left hand side is natural log. Let's put parentheses if you want. Natural log of 8036 all over 7000 and then all over whatever is in yellow 2 natural log 1 plus 0 0.056 all over 2. Take your calculator and calculate the answer. And the answer will be 2.45 or if you approximate it, it says rounded. So it's going to be 2.50 years, 2.5 years. And that's the answer. Pretty cool. I'm, I left all the constants until the end on purpose for you to know how the solution is built. And also, I think if you calculate everything at the very end, it saves you time because now you just have to take your calculator once and carefully plug it in. Make sure you save all the parentheses. So this parenthesis is important. When you put slash, this parenthesis is important. Then in your calculator, probably you need to put parentheses like this. Then you put one more slash in the calculator, like so. And then you put parentheses for the, for the denominator because times two log. And don't forget these parentheses. And don't forget this slash. So maybe it makes sense to do it step by step if you want to, to make sure you didn't do any mistake on the test. Calculate the numerator separately. Calculate the denominator separately. And then divide out the results. Maybe that's a good idea as well. And that's how you solve exponential equations. This example is talking about some drugs. So we're going to have a number of milligrams D, D of H. That's a certain drug that is in the patient's bloodstream. H is my time. Number of hours, that's why it's H, after the drug is injected and is given by the following function. That's what we call exponential decay. So when the doctor makes injection into your body, the, the drug consisting of drugs decaying, how do you know it's decay? Because of this negative sign over here, that means it's decreasing, decaying. When the number of milligrams is too small, in this case we say it reaches only 17 milligrams, the doctor have to come back and the drug should be injected again. And it's indeed a true story, that's how they do it, that's why they time it. So they know how much time uh, should be waited for that, but can you calculate it? Besides, each body is different, some person that uh, has, uh, that is heavier than another one, uh, will have different time for this drug to decay. So that's important to recalculate all of this every time. But first, let's build an equation. Technically speaking, the equation is already in front of you. I already have 45e to the minus 0.25h. And then we know that the left-hand side is exactly how much drug is left after h hours. And it says when it's left 17, find the time. So when they say how much time, you know that they're asking you to find t. Make sense? In this case, it's not t. Uh, t usually is standard, but in this case, they decide to do it h. So we're solving for this h, and we're going to do exactly the way I just did before. Step 1, I will divide by 45 to isolate the exponential function. 17 over 45 equals e to the minus 0 0.25 h. Step 2. I will apply it natural log to the both sides. I will have step one. Let's do one, two. Now I will do like this. Original. Step one, step two. Natural log of 17 over 45 equals log. And okay, I will write down and then I will tell you. Log will undo the exponential function. So that's very convenient. Like so. And uh, we did not have this luxury in the previous problem, so that's very good to have it. Log, log, and I'll put parentheses. You know the rule. Ln, ln of e to the x, ln undoes e. So whatever going to stay is only this input. What is my input in this case? My input is negative 0.25h. So I will have natural log of 17 over 45 on the left hand side and minus 0.25h on the right hand side. Simplify using properties or even definition of log in this case. And now we just need to isolate h. To solve for h, I will divide everything which is, I will divide by everything which is not h. That is negative 0.25. So the last step will be h equals left hand side is natural log 
17 over 45 all over negative 0 0.25 that came from the right hand side this is the final answer now you grab your calculator maybe calculate the numerator first denominator after that and then simplify and it will round up to 3.9 hours so the doctor will come back in 3.9 hours to re-inject the drug last example Last example says that we are looking at the bacteria in a certain sample increase according to the given function. And here's the exponential increase of the bacteria population. Y sub zero is the initial number. That's always like that. Whatever is here is called initial value. I, I mentioned it in the previous, in one of my videos. Y on the left hand side is the number present at time t. So that's basically the end, right? If I wait in for five seconds, Y will give me how many bacteria I will have in five seconds. Well, T actually in hours. How many does, how many hours does it take? Okay, this phrase means they want me to solve for T. That's what it means. We know that. That's already not the first time they're asking us. For the size of this, so they call it sample size. For the sample size to double. Okay, that's not too bad. So we want to jump from y sub 0 to twice of y sub 0. So the equation will look like this. 2y sub 0 is my answer because they want me to double the original sample size. Original sample size is y sub 0. And then e 0.0590. That's the reproduction rate of the bacteria. That's the actual equation. You need to build this. After this, it becomes very straightforward. So your job is not to freak out. You see the word double, and it means put uh, on the left hand side times twice more than the original number. In this case, y sub zero. We can divide by y sub zero because it's not zero, right? We did not start with zero bacteria. How can they multiply if there is no bacteria? And we can, when we divide by y sub zero, the equation becomes two equals e raised to the zero point zero fifty ninety. After this, you already can use definition of the logarithm function if you want. If you freak out of, about what I just said, just apply log to the both sides. That's what I do all the time. ln here, ln there. ln2 equals ln e 0.0590. This situation with the previous example repeats. ln e, ln of e and thus they undo each other and whatever stays is this guy on the top you can also imagine that if you put it down you'll have ln e ln e is one times whatever i just circled so ln2 will be 0 0.0590 times one so that's just that and then we need to solve for t that means i will divide by whatever t has in front of it 0 0.059 t equals so i'm solving for this t T equals ln2 all over 0.059. That's the actual, the finite answer, and it's exact answer. And then they ask us to approximate. It will be 11.7 hours. So we need to wait for 11.7 hours for the population of the bacteria we are researching to double. Pretty interesting problem, actually. I like this one the most one. Which one was your favorite one? I kind of like the last two because it was not very hard to build. For the first problem, you need to remember the formula. But for the last two, it's actually pretty straightforward. And especially the last one, if you did not freak out on the phrase to double, and then it solves really fast, you see? Everything happens super fast, just in three steps. Step one, you figure out the formula. Step two, apply the locks on the both sides. Step three, Use the fact that log and does e. Step four, divide by the constant. Done. The answer follows. Don't forget to put parentheses and everything in your calculator, not to mess up the finite answer. Now try to do these problems by yourself without this video. And I'm pretty sure you will see that you are very confident with those problems. And you can do them fast and make sure on the exam, you just uh, know what you're doing. Carefully apply all the numbers. Don't mess up the calculation. And before you submit the exam, I would redo this problem without looking at your own notes to check everything again. I'm glad that you watched this video and hopefully it will help you to do better on the test and in your homework. See you next time.